Uh oh. 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 Banjo Kazooie held an adventure that I will never forget and will always cherish. Upon finishing the game, though, I often wandered around aimlessly both inside and outside Gruntilda's lair. Spiral Mountain was both relaxing, but also kind of sad to me, especially seeing the state of things in Nuts and Bolts. Banjo's house was essentially located in the middle of nowhere, and although I'm sure the occasional card game was fun, my sense of exploration wanted to know what else was out there in this world. Later on in Banjo-Tooie, we would find out that beyond these walls led to the remainder of the Isle o Hags, with a gigantic mountain island not far from it. Cloud Cuckoo Land, in scale, is comparable to Mount Everest, as you can see the mountainous Isle o Hags way below it. While knowing that Banjo's land was far larger than I thought, I still wanted to know more. So I turned back to the earliest memory I had of Banjo, and that was in Diddy Kong Racing. Diddy Kong Racing was a game that I unfortunately never finished as a child. I'll admit it, it was honestly too difficult for me to collect everything in the game. I wasn't too big on racing games in my younger years, and even with the combined efforts of my brothers, we never made it all the way to the final ending. The silver coin challenges absolutely wrecked us, and I still have nightmares about them to this day. When I think back about Diddy Kong Racing in general though, it does pique my interest. The whole game took place on a small island, where a group of characters that I would grow to love gathered together to defeat some giant awkward pig. Whiz pig. I don't even. But what always got my mind racing was the fact that Diddy, Banjo, and Kunker all gathered on some remote island to fight against an oppressive dark force. While this is way before any of the characters' primes, as in Banjo lacks Kazooie, and Conker is running on gasoline and not alcohol, it is very interesting that such a thing would occur. Obviously, when I played this game for the first time, I did not know they would go on to star in their own grand adventures. But now that I'm looking back at it, it paints a mysterious picture about the world that all these characters are from. If we judge things by the Nintendo 64 version of the game, the explorable areas of Donkey Kong, Banjo-Kazooie, and Conker all take place in the same world. Some like to refer to this as the Mushroom World since Mario has some notable crossovers as well. But meeting on the island to face Whizpig was no coincidence, as Diddy himself wrote a distress message to Banjo and had it delivered via makeshift carrier pigeon, similar to how Timber wrote him one. This shows that their friendship comes from an earlier time in life, perhaps in the aftermath of when Diddy Kong was kidnapped in Donkey Kong Country 3 or maybe somewhere on the way to Big Ape City from Donkey Kong Land. It would have to have been when he was away from both Donkey Kong and Crocodile Island though, since both are right next to each other. Either way, it takes a certain level of friendship to FedEx same day ship a distress letter by Parrot across the world. But that's an interesting point too. Just how big or small is this world? As Banjo traveled over from Spiral Mountain, or wherever he was living at the time, he ran into Kunker, who joined up with him on his journey. At some point though, they must have hit water and would have to set sail to Timber's Island. Timber's Island, the place where Diddy Kong Racing takes place, is in close proximity to Donkey Kong Island. In the remake of Diddy Kong Racing, it is even more apparent when Timber and friends are literally right outside Diddy Kong's house after sending the letter. Which begs the question, why even send a letter in the first place when you could just walk right up to his house? Anyways, when I began to try to figure out the structure of this world, my head began to spin a bit. Trying to shape the world by placing islands in relative location to one another was an impossible feat, so I began to consider other options. Donkey Kong had the largest documentation of areas and maps covered due to the number of games it had, so it would be easier using their world as a reference. But even then, I didn't have much luck. But then I noticed something that was really interesting. I noticed that bears were only in one area of the Donkey Kong universe. And that was in the northern chronosphere of Donkey Kong Country 3. Now that may not sound like a lot, but it was definitely a start. The Brothers Bear were a series of characters you bartered with throughout the game in order to collect banana birds and other items which, in turn, were needed to complete the game. 
each were in different regions throughout the northern hemisphere, but they all had one thing in common besides being bears. All of their names began with the letter B. Brash, Blunder, Bramble, Bazooka, Blizzard, Benny, Banjo? Could Banjo be one of these bears? It seems that male bears within the region, whether confirmed to be brothers or not, feature names that start with B. So while Tootie, Banjo's sister, breaks this naming convention, this naming formula might only apply to male bears. Obviously, Banjo is not a bear you encounter in Donkey Kong Country 3, but it doesn't mean he did not originate from this group. However, while digging a bit deeper, I recalled an evil laugh that always annoyed me as a child. The laugh belonged to Bleak, the boss of K3, the snow region in Donkey Kong Country 3. This laughing pile of snow featured a notable top hat and scarf, and he fired and slung snowballs about. He did seem oddly familiar to Sir Slush, his Banjo-Kazooie counterpart, though. I mean, just listen to those laughs. <laughs> Creepy. Perhaps just beyond the mountains of the northern hemisphere is the Isle o Hags, and thus the reason that these characters are so similar. With that said, it would make sense that Spiral Mountain is part of the northern hemisphere. But unfortunately, all this still falls in the realm of speculation and not actual fact. Even with Tip Tuff's presence in Banjo-Kazooie, it still only shows they exist in the same world, but offers no clues on how these worlds are laid out. In my eyes, it makes sense that Banjo hails from the north, or I mean south, depending on how you look at it from Donkey Kong Country 3's instruction manual. But what are your thoughts on this subject? Is Banjo one of the brothers bear? Are you secretly a cartographer for the mushroom world? Please share in the comments below. Perhaps we may never know the layouts of these lands now that Microsoft owns Rare, but one could say the search is half the fun. Thanks for tuning in for our cross-game journey through the land of Nintendo. If you'd like to join us on our YouTube voyage and help us map the world, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching, guys and gals, and until our next video, cheers. You've made it to the end of the video! But wait, your quest isn't over yet. If you're a fan of Undertale or that slick red plumber, then these videos might be for you.